dominance, competitiveness, and the spirit of winning. The NBA's Most Valuable Player Award is the highest individual achievement a player can accomplish in their career. Out of the tens of thousands of players to lace up in the NBA, only 35 have won a regular season MVP. But what exactly wow. does value mean when assessing the league's most valuable player? Some would say it's leading your team to victory night in and night out. Others may say it's displaying your dominance through sheer numbers, points, rebounds, assists, that type of thing. You could even argue that a player's value comes in the form of his mere presence, the intangibles that don't show up in the numbers. But however you look at it, one thing is certain. Nikola Jokic has been the most valuable NBA player so far this season. And the gap between him and the next guy isn't even close. Today's video- Does he get like hate or do people not, or really just not understand what Jokic is or does? Like, you know what? Uh, let's, let's watch the video. Sponsored by Raycon. Our friend had to deal with optimized ever since I hear bass or bass take call other pre. Just and stop. right now you can or go to just stop, bro. We got AirPods, bro. 15% off. In 1997, nearing the end of his days with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan had reached legendary status on the court. He was widely recognized as not only the best player in the league, but as the greatest player of all time. And the man wasn't even done yet. He led the league in scoring, averaging nearly 30 points per game on ridiculous efficiency. He made first team all defense and he led the Bulls to 69 wins. Easily the best record in the NBA that season. With weeks left in the season, the MVP award was all but his. Congratulations for enormous achievement, but congratulations, Carl Malone, 1996-97, NBA Most Valuable Player. How do you sit there and take this award knowing that literally Jordan, like, I, how, like, how do you take that? How, bro? I don't get it. Like, there's no way you actually in your heart feel like you were the best. At least he thought the MVP award was his. But instead, the award went to Carl Malone, a decision that to this day, Michael Jordan can't believe actually happened. Everyone in the league knew Michael was the best and most valuable player. It was obvious. So how could even the greatest player to ever play the game get robbed out of an award that was rightfully his? Well, there's a few reasons. One being voter fatigue. Seeing the same player dominate year after year can get tiring. Voters will go out of their way to justify rewarding anyone other than the guy who was always rewarded. Which brings us to our second point. Narratives. More often than not, storylines, whether accurate or not, manifest themselves in the minds of voters and fans throughout the season, and these storylines tend to outweigh actual results. And no matter how much we try to stay objective on these matters, subjective narratives are bound to have an effect on all of us, even in the case of Michael Jordan. But Mike isn't the only player to get robbed out of an MVP. In 1961, Wilt Chamberlain averaged 50 points and nearly 26 rebounds a game while leading his team to the third best record in the NBA. And he didn't win the regular season MVP. In 2006, Kobe Bryant put together one of the greatest individual seasons this century, featuring his iconic 81 point game and a 40 bomb every other night. The man finished fourth in MVP voting that season. But in Kobe's case, he suffered from what many other MVP candidates before him and after him have suffered from, a not so great record. See, in the 2006 season, the Lakers finished as the seventh seed in the West, a playoff team, but nowhere near the top seed. And in the NBA, there's a bit of an unwritten rule that if a player has hopes of winning the MVP, his team must be one of the winningest teams in the league, the standard almost always being no worse than the third seed in their given conference. Throughout the history of the modern NBA, only four MVP winners finished the season with a team seated lower than second. And only one player has won the regular season MVP with a team seed lower than third. That player being Russell Westbrook in 2017. In that season, Westbrook was a very rare exception to the rule. In fact, so far, he's been the only exception to the rule. The first player in over 50 years to average a triple-double for an entire season. A feat that everyone unanimously said would never happen again. And a feat so incredible that although his OKC Thunder only had the sixth seed going into the playoffs, he won the regular season MVP. But then, in the very next season, Russ averaged a triple-double again. And yet somehow he finished fifth 
in the MVP race. The inconsistency of the voting process was put on full display that season. Can a player, regardless of his team's success, put up numbers so ridiculous that the league has no choice but to anoint him as the most valuable player? Well, according to Russ's 2017 season, yes. And if we're following this same criteria, Nikola Jokic has easily been the league's most valuable player this season. I've heard talks of Giannis winning another MVP, Steph making a run for his third MVP, Kevin Durant or Jimmy Butler being the leader in the race, but hardly anyone has mentioned Nikola Jokic being the most valuable player in the league this season. But all the numbers across the board point to the Joker as the league's most valuable player. In fact, so far, the season he's having isn't just the best among his peers. Jokic is having one of the best individual seasons of all time. Now, we're all familiar with the PER stat, an overall statistic of a player's efficiency and production on the court relative to the rest of the league. Here's a chart of the top 50 NBA players in terms of PER. Here's Kevin Durant, here's Stephen Curry, here's Giannis, here's Jimmy Butler, and here is Nikola Jokic. And if this spot looks almost unreasonably high, that's because it is. Nikola's PER this season is 35.3. The current single season PER record is 31.9 set by Giannis two seasons ago. And the record before that was Wilt Chamberlain's PER of 31.8 back in 1962. In fact, here's the highest single season PER Michael Jordan ever achieved. Here's LeBron's single season record. Here's Kobe's, Magic's, Bird's, Shaq's, Kareem's. No player ever has come even close to the production and efficiency that Jokic is putting together this season. And if we narrow down the production to just offense, Jokic is still head and shoulders above everyone else. This season, Jokic has an offensive box plus minus of 10.1, the second highest offensive box plus minus in NBA history, trailing only Steph's 2015-2016 season of 10.4. The next closest player this season is Steph with an OBPM of 8.3. In fact, only nine players Yeah, I know you have to look at all the stats, but it's it's just like it's another thing of like okay, so like Montrez Harrell is not better than these players, you know what I mean? Like Trey Young is not better than LeBron or Luca. Like it's it's just you got to look at all the numbers. You got to look at all the numbers, but like as a whole. I know this is just because I, I, every time I make fun of stats like this, people are like, oh, dude, like you're a casual. Like, All right, bro. You can't just listen to one stat and just one only one stat, bro. There's league wide have an OBPM of even five. Everyone on this list will either be an all star this season or a borderline all star. And even these all NBA talents aren't even in the same stratosphere as the Joker. So if this man is having one of the greatest individual seasons ever, why is no one talking about it? The man is averaging 26, 14, and 6 a game on nearly 60, 40, 80 splits. And no one is talking about it. Right now, the current MVP odds are in favor of Stephen Curry, followed by Kevin Durant and then Giannis. Jokic is down at fourth with odds that suggest he is far from the MVP. This article's headline doesn't even mention Jokic, like he's some sort of afterthought. And if I had to say why this is, I'd say it comes down to a few things. First, Jokic hasn't had a marquee performance this season. You know, that massive game that makes all the headlines and demands fans and voters to reconsider their MVP hierarchy? Every MVP needs a marquee performance to really draw the masses and build their campaign. Second, and the most obvious reason, is that the Nuggets aren't doing too hot right now. With a below 500 record of 9-10, and 10, the Nuggets currently hold the 10th seed in the West. A seed so bad that most fans won't even consider Jokic as a frontrunner in the MVP race. Because if a player is truly valuable, shouldn't his team be winning the vast majority of their games? The short answer is yes. But the actual answer to that question isn't quite as black and white. Because the Nuggets are winning when Jokic is on the court and surrounded by competent teammates. So far this season, in the 14 games that Jokic has suited up, the Nuggets have outscored their opponents by a combined 48 points. In the five games that Jokic has missed this season, the Nuggets have been outscored by their opponents by 62 points. 
That means that with Jokic, the Nuggets are a winning team with an average margin of plus 3.4 points. Without him, they're a losing team with an average margin of negative 12.1 points. Sure, the Nuggets have a losing record at the moment and they're far from a championship contending team. But without Jokic, they are downright atrocious. Recently, I asked a friend why people tend to downplay or downright ignore Nikola's excellence. And his answer was simple, but unfortunately, very true. His game is just boring. To the purest of basketball fans, the Joker's game is a work of art. He's brilliant. I personally love watching the guy play, and I'd even go as far as saying he's one of a kind. But to the average fan, Nikola's game is lethargic, slow-paced, lacking all the high-flying acrobatics and 30-foot bombs other stars put on full display every night. Nikola's excellence is rooted in his ability to break down the game to its simplest components and exploit the other team with his uncanny ability to see two, three, four moves ahead. True. But it's this very simplicity that deters fans from giving him the credit that he is due. Tim Duncan dealt with a similar problem his entire career. Timmy was so technically sound that he didn't need to be fancy. He didn't need a 45-inch vert or any sort of alien-like ability. He could dominate anyone with a handful of post moves, bank shots, and well-timed rolls to the basket. The man's nickname was literally the big fundamental. And because of this, it took years and years for people to truly see the immense value in Duncan. Nikola will shred a defense for 35 points and 15 assists without even getting a foot off the ground in the process. The man will appear to be moving in slow motion and still make your best defender look absolutely lost. He will alter a dozen shots on the defensive end without even getting close to blocking one of them. And you'll more than likely never see one of these plays on SportsCenter or your favorite sports social media outlet. But when the vast majority of fans get their information and form their opinions based on these short clips and highlights, it's no wonder that Nikola's impact, relevance, and dominance are undervalued. If you were able to somehow remove the hype and narratives from the MVP discussion, the race for the award would look something like this. And that's because this list is exactly that. Basketball references MVP tracker, which gives a very objective look into the MVP race at the moment based solely on the numbers. The only list where you'll find Jokic ahead of everyone else. But if the numbers you've seen so far haven't swayed you enough, Jokic's excellence doesn't stop at the offensive end. With a defensive box plus minus of five this season, Jokic is leading the entire NBA on the defensive end by a massive margin. The next closest player is Draymond Green with a DBPM of 3.9 and then Giannis with 3.4. And believe it or not, Nikola's defensive box plus minus this season is the second highest mark ever recorded. I am not exaggerating when I say that Nikola Jokic is currently having arguably the most productive, efficient, and dominant season in NBA history. Now how's that for value? And he's not going to win MVP because the Nuggets are not going to be a top three seed. And even if they were, he won last year, bro. They're not going to just, they're not going to give it back to Jokic, bro. And that, and that's another thing is like, dude, when you see all these Curry highlights, right? It's impressive. Like it looks, it, it it's like, it's like fun to watch. Like it's fun to watch Curry shoot like a 40 footer. Like it's just fun as fuck to look at that. But this dude's completely right. Dude, it's not fun to watch. It's That's why I hated watching Spurs games. Like, they were always good, but I would never want to watch a Spurs game. So I'm like, dude, this is boring. Uh, about Tim Duncan. Same shit with Jokic. Like, bro, I don't, I don't want to watch fucking the Nuggets, dude. It's just boring to me. <clears throat> um, And I think it's how, like, a lot of, uh, a lot of fans. Are, yeah, Nick, yo, Nick Ray, dude, you're done, bro. Get out. Get out. Just get the fuck out. This dude sits here and just types tap every time I talk. Like, bro, you're literally just weird as fuck. <clears throat> that, um, that guy got uh, injured, right? And he's like out for the season. Michael Porter. 